guys, welcome back to my channel. I've got another great video for you here today and this one is making over my guest bathroom. So I've got this cute little guest bathroom downstairs and it's already a really nice, fresh looking bathroom so I'm not gonna do too much to it. All I wanna do is add in some nice decor pieces to make it homey, give it a little bit of warmth. I still wanna keep it like light and modern, but also cozy at the same time. But before I get into that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and just give this video a thumbs up because it's gonna be a good one. So as you can see, it's actually a really tiny bathroom. There's not much room to move around, but we've got a few really good features. I've got a nice big wall space over here for a mirror and some shelves. And then in the actual uh, shower, I've got a little shower nook, which is perfect for putting in shampoo, conditioner, soaps, and things like that. So I don't have them cluttered all over the shower floor. If you're remodeling a bathroom, shower nook is definitely the way to go. It makes everything look super nice and neat. I'm totally obsessed with it. First things first, I'm gonna hang up some shelves just so I have place to put my decor and basics like uh, cream, soap, towels, whatever, the basics. I've got these shelves from Ikea. They're pine shelves. Not too sure if Ikea still sells them because I probably got them at least six or seven years ago. So I've got this beautiful walnut style vanity in the bathroom and I love the color of it and I want to bring that into the shelves as well. Okay, so I'm just going to start off by filling these holes from when I used these previously. So this is sandable and stainable wood filler and I'm just using my fingers to fill in the holes. Then I'm just going to grab this little scraping tool and scrape off the excess. Once that's dry, I'll give the shelves a quick sand with 180 grit sandpaper all over. Then I'm going to go in with this bare water-based pre-stain. Just wiping it on with a paper towel, this is going to help the stain absorb more evenly into the wood. And then once that's all dry, I'm gonna go in with the stain. So I tried out two different colors and ended up going with this one, which is English chestnuts. And this was pretty much an exact match. I've transitioned to water-based stains recently and I'm totally in love. Like, these are absolutely amazing, no toxic smells, and they're pretty easy to use. I found that it worked best when I first applied it with a brush and then wiped off any excess as opposed to with regular oil-based stain where I would use a towel to wipe it on and off. So I did two coats of the stain. And finally, for the last step, I used this water-based varnish with a satin finish to seal it off and give it a little bit of sheen. Once I've got all of that done, I'm gonna set these aside and let them dry and I'm gonna work on hanging up the curtain rod. I've got these nice shower curtain hooks which kind of clip on to any shower curtain. I always like to have like the fabric shower curtains with a shower curtain liner on the inside, but if you can't find any shower curtain that you actually like or the size that you need, you can just use regular curtains and use these little hooks to hang them on and it comes out beautifully. You have the actual plastic shower curtain liner on the inside to protect it from any water, so. It's perfect. I've done that for about a year now and it looks great. For this bathroom, I actually found a cute shower curtain from Ikea, just a plain white one. So I'm just gonna use these Ikea shower curtain rings to hang that up as well.
So another thing that's important is this is a shower base and I'm putting a shower curtain. So I wanna make sure that the shower curtain actually touches the floor so that water doesn't go past the shower base. And the other thing that I got to actually keep any water inside the shower is these uh, shower liner clips. So I got these from Amazon. Essentially the point is I uh, just got a little adhesive on the back, you stick it to the shower tiles um, and then you can tuck the shower curtain in here so that it doesn't move, doesn't go out of the shower while they're showering and then water splashes all over the place. So I think this is a really good solution um, to my shower base with no glass door. And they were only like four bucks. Oh, did I talk about painting the door? Okay, so this was actually the first thing that I did. I painted the door. Like I said, I still wanna keep the bathroom fresh and clean, so I'm not really doing much to the walls, but I did want to add an element that would give this room a little bit more depth. So I figured a nice dark door would be the perfect way to do that. So I've got the basic door over here. This is not painted yet. It's just primed MDF. And I actually just took this off the hinges, took off the uh, door handles, and I sprayed this door with my new spray painter. By the way, whenever you're painting doors, please, please take them off the hinges. All the doors in my house have painted, over-painted hinges, and like it's so hard to actually take the doors off because the paint on the hinges is so thick that like I can't even use the screwdriver to get the nails, to get the screws out. So that's gonna be a fun project. Not for today, but it will be fun. Okay, for this door, after I took off the hinges and the door handle, I took it out to my backyard and I used my new spray painter. So this was a fun little tool that I got because I'm actually gonna be repainting all the doors in my house. I figured having a paint sprayer would make that a lot faster. So I tried it out on this door and oh my God, you guys, this spray painter is probably gonna change my life for projects like you know, repainting furniture or painting all the doors in my house, this is perfect. And I actually did a whole review video on this. You can check that out, I'll link it up above and I'll show you guys what I think of this paint sprayer. If you're a DIYer, definitely a tool that you might wanna have in your DIY tool belt. Okay, so I painted this door black. Everything else in my house is white, by the way. Literally everything. I have one green wall as an accent in the den. Everything else is white. But wow, this black is just beautiful and I'm really happy I tried it out here because this is the color that I chose for all my doors upstairs. So eventually when I do that, I think it'll give some really nice depth to my upstairs hallway and definitely will do the same to this bathroom. Hanging up hooks on the back of the door is not exactly the simplest thing because a lot of doors are hollow cord. So this one is hollow cord, meaning it, it only has like a wooden frame and then the rest of it is hollow. Um, and it's super, super thin sheet of plywood, like probably quarter inch sheet of plywood and then fully hollow after that. So even an anchor won't really do much in this case. To solve this problem, I ordered a command hook from Amazon, but obviously this isn't the nicest hook. I'm just gonna put that aside for now and only use the tape that it came with. This is a great tip for renters too. They just make sure you buy tape or command strips that can hold a few pounds of weight. I think this one holds about seven or seven and a half pounds. I cut the tape down to size and then following the instructions on the package, pressed one side to the hook, cleaned the wall with some alcohol and then pressed the hook to the wall. For some reason, I thought these little pieces would pull off, but that's not how it works. So I just cut them off with an X-Acto knife afterwards. All right, my shelf is done drawing. It's kind of funny, it looks much lighter on camera, but in real life, it's basically like a perfect match to the vanity. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up. I was originally gonna do two shelves, but decided that it would be a bit too much for this size space, and I ended up doing only one shelf, and I'm super happy with how that turned out. Whenever I hang anything, laser level is definitely the way to go. I think that's uh, one of those tools that every DIYer should have in their toolkit. The only problem with this is when I'm using the laser level, I have to put it on my tripod, which means I can't use my camera tripod. I've only got one of them, so it causes a little bit of a problem for filming, but it's okay. We're gonna get through that. I'm gonna try and get the studs if I can, but if not, I'll use wall anchors. There won't be any heavy items on these shelves. 
it's mostly just gonna be some decor, maybe a few soaps, so I think I'll be okay with wall anchors. If you wanna put heavy items on shelves that you're hanging up, they have specific wall anchors that you just put into sheetrock, um, and some of them hold like 40, 50 pounds, 70 pounds. Next, I'll be hanging up the lovely mirror. So I've got this beautiful round mirror. I love round mirrors. If I had a bigger bathroom, taller ceilings, I'd probably go for one of those oval mirrors as well. I think those are gorgeous. But for this bathroom, this was the perfect size. This one was from HomeSense and it wasn't expensive, maybe $40-ish, I think. So if you remember a couple of videos back, I made some viral Pinterest and TikTok decor specifically for this bathroom. So I'm finally going to use those today and I'm going to show you how I decorate with them. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to link it up right now. So you can just go ahead and check that out or, you know, finish watching this video then check that out. Honestly, they were really easy, really fun to make. I did them all in the span of one afternoon, which is actually pretty rare. Um, and they came out really cute, so I'm excited to actually decorate with them, finally. So I want the shower itself to stay nice and neat, so instead of having a whole bunch of different shampoos and conditioners, I just got these little amber bottles over here from Amazon. These ones are actually plastic um, because I figured that glass in the shower is like a disaster waiting to happen. So I just got a couple of these bottles, put some shampoo and conditioner in them and labeled them with my label maker and they look super cute um, and gives it that nice little spa feeling. I love the uniform look of the amber bottles in the shower instead of having so many different kind of bottles. And of course I needed to hang up the toilet paper uh, holder. I got this basic one from Ikea for like three bucks, which is great because I've gone to other stores and they're like $30, which I don't really understand why. And this one was much nicer, exactly what I was looking for. So I'm happy I didn't settle for what I saw in stores. So now for the finishing touches, I'm just gonna add a few little fake plants around the bathroom and a nice little macrame rug that I made right next to the sink. So I actually made this rug following a tutorial from McKenna, so I'm gonna link that down below. It's a great tutorial. The rug came out exactly the way I wanted it to and I just changed the measurements from the tutorial to fit my bathroom. I got the macrame from Amazon. I'll link that below as well. I couldn't believe I made my own rug. Pretty cool, honestly. So the black rug just fits perfectly with the style of this bathroom, but still brings in a little touch of my boho flair.
hope you guys enjoyed my little decorating tips and DIY tips and if you did don't forget to hit the like button down below leave me a comment on what you see yourselves using in your bathrooms and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more of my home decor and DIY content